Good morning, everyone. My name is Carla, and you have reached my floss tube channel, Carla Being Crafty, where I talk about mostly cross stitch, but also other crafts that I enjoy and a little bit of life thrown in. Um, today is my floss tube number 167, and it is Sunday, November 20th, just a few days away from Thanksgiving here in the United States. Um, I want to say welcome to all of you. Um, if this is your first time finding my channel, I hope that you like what you see. Want to hit like and subscribe and come back every week. Um, and if you are a returning viewer, um, thank you so much. Uh, I say it all the time, but really doing these videos and spending this little bit of time with you guys, because I do feel like I'm with you while I'm... Um, doing the videos <laughs> is really kind of a high a high point in my week. Um, I enjoy doing the videos and I enjoy uh, when they finally get uploaded. Sometimes it's really easy and sometimes it's very frustrating, but when they finally get uploaded, I super love seeing, you know, people watching and um, and getting the comments. It's always such, such a, a fun part of my week. So thank you so much for, um, participating and and spending time with me um I do have a super thanks button you know I have to do the little commercial part right I have a super thanks button um down below if uh if you feel so inclined to uh give me a little bit of monetary support um that money does just go to pay for uh shipping and zooms um so every little bit helps and I do so appreciate it although I really don't expect it but um um, I, I do appreciate it whenever anybody, um, uh, clicks on that button. Um, so let's see, I always give kind of my little Southern California weather report. Um, and it is a gorgeous day today. It's actually really early. It's like only at eight 30. Um, I was up like even earlier than normal this week, not for a bad reason or anything. I just kind of woke up and decided to go ahead and start my day and, and get ready for my video so that I could get it done early and maybe it will upload faster that way. <laughs> um, but, uh, yes, yeah, so the weather is gorgeous. Um, the coming week, it's going to get a little bit warmer during the day, although it's staying really kind of crisp in the forties at night, but it's going to go up to, um, kind of like high seventies, low eighties for the whole week. And then I think it's coming back down again. So, um, it's still though, it's still going to be cool in the mornings and at night and stuff, which I really like. I sleep better when it's like that. My cat gets very snuggly when this is the weather. So I, I get nice of, of kitty, kitty cuddles when I'm sleeping instead of grumpy hot kitty who doesn't want everything to do with me, which happens in the summer. Um, but yeah, I really like it when the weather's like this. So we should have some nice, nice weather for Thanksgiving. Um, I want to remind you guys um, Sunday, not today, but next week, Sunday the 27th, we're having a Zoom, um, stitchy meetup. Um, all of the, the codes, the meeting ID and the passcode are below in the <clears throat> description box. Um, and that will be starting at 3 p.m. on, um, 3 p.m. Pacific time next Sunday. So if you are in the U.S. and, you know, have had a nice, uh, Thanksgiving weekend, it, hopefully it'll be a good way to, to end your weekend. Um, I am really looking forward to Thanksgiving, not least of all, because I could really just, I just want the four day weekend. I just want to not be at work and not be sick, not to not, to not be at work because of a good reason, not because I don't feel well. Um, I just need a little bit of a break. So work has been you know, off and on boring and stressful, <laughs> that makes sense. Um, you know, busy, which is a good thing, makes the time go by fast, but um, but I am I am really looking forward to four days off. So um, yeah, I think that's really about it for my preamble, which tends to mean that my video will be shorter. Um, but who knows? At the end I have something to talk about that might just stretch it out a bit. So um Let's get started on the whips and things. I don't have any little golden book stuff to talk about, although I will be talking about it at the end of the video. Um, so uh, let's just get into to the stitching. Um, I had what I guess is being called a SAF now, a start and finish this week. Um, I got a bug in my ear as I do. Um, I've been on this like finishing kick and just 
doing, you know, the same kind of like 10 patterns, trying to get them done before the end of the year. And although I'm enjoying it and I'm enjoying the progress and definitely the finishes that I've had, sometimes then I get this itch to do something or start something. And so I got that, that in my head. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know if you guys remember these, cause this is kind of like a blast from the past. But when I first started stitching, which was in 2019, that summer, I think, um, Target had on their dollar spot, they had these bags and it was, it just went through the stitching community and floss tube like wildfire. There was like a bunch of different colors, blue, black, tan, white. Um, and they were, I think they were like $3 or something. And the thing that was so cool about them is they were perforated, this faux leather perforated bag and perfect for cross stitching on. So again, I was a baby cross stitcher, um, brand new, but I went ahead and stopped at Target and my Target did have some and I got three of them. I got a tan one, a black one, and a blue one. So that summer, and you can, you can see back in my old videos, I don't know when it was, I didn't look that up, but I used the tan one and I made this really cool, I used a, Reol a Riolis, um, little flower like one of the little five dollar kits um i just used the chart it and it was like this yellow flower and i i did it over here and i ended up giving it to my friend and the thing i learned when i did that flower was that um i was using full full um i say full strand so like the six stranded piece of dmc i was using that full thing doubled um <clears throat> to do the stitching and it came out nice and thick and and really filled in but it you know eats up floss like crazy so I was using I have a and I still have a big bag of what I call sort of my other floss um, so basically when I first started stitching I bought a big uh, like 300 skein um, lot of floss from eBay and most of it was DMC so I put all that into my master DMC I was just trying to like like um, shore up my my stock my stash <clears throat> in in a more economical way so I can't remember exactly what I paid but I know it worked out to be about 13 cents a skein for like these 300 skeins that I got so I would say probably about at least two-thirds or more were DMC but then there was a bunch of like Coates and Clark and, and older brands that don't exist anymore. So I have this bag of other flosses <clears throat> and I've used them for projects where I just need a color or, you know, I mean, it's still perfectly good floss. It's just not a, um, it's either, it, they're, they're not brands that are, that are even available anymore. They're older flosses. So I've used those when I did that the tan bag with the yellow big yellow flower um, and I realized it was like a floss eater so I kept having to pull another color and sort of like chart on the fly I mean I was using the pattern but I kept changing colors and it, it worked with that flower it, it turned out fine so I got it in my head that I and and what was that? That was 2019. So that's like what three years ago? 19, 20, 20, yeah, three years ago that I did that bag. And I have the other two, the blue and black, that have been sitting here. And every so often I think about them and oh, I should do something with those. Because the first one turned out really great, but I gave it away. Um and in fact, my friend told me the other day, like I gave it to my friend and she really liked it. And then I didn't hear about it. And apparently her mom, who's in her 90s and just went back to live in the Philippines, her mom stole it. And her mom has it. She says, like, talking to her mom, like, FaceTime, and she saw it in the background. She's like, hey, where'd you get that? Mom's like, I don't know. It's mine. You know, her mom took it because she liked it so much. So anyway, <laughs> I digress. So I had the black bag, and, and I had gotten another Riolis that had, like, a pink flower. And I thought that would look really pretty on this. So... I spent a good portion of Sunday doing that pink flower and I have the same situations I had before where I kept running out of the floss because it just eats it up you know you have three skeins of a color and you think that's gonna be enough and it just was eating it up so I thought about it on Monday as I sometimes do at work when I'm letting my mind wander a little bit and I just I wasn't liking it 
And so when I got home one day, I cut all of that floss out. And it was like, it had been like that much full stitched flower. Um, do I even have? Yeah, it was this. This is what I was trying to stitch on it, but I just didn't have the right colors and it was, it looked horrible. It really did. It looked horrible. This is really cute. I still kind of want to do this, but <laughs> it looked horrible. So I still wanted to do something in this bag. So what I did instead, after I spent all that time pulling out that floss, is I pulled out this ink circles. Oop. Ink circles, oven tail. And I thought, okay, well, I have a couple skeins of variegated floss um, that are really pretty. I'll use that instead. And instead of doubling my full six strand piece and making 12 strands, I used it singly. Um, so it's six strands. So it's not as, as full, but I figured it would be fine because this is kind of a lacy pattern anyway. I still ran out of floss. Um, yeah, I still ran out of floss. Um, so I ended up taking, because I had this rainbow, a uh, rainbow variegated. And then I took a different variegated, and then I ran out of that one, and I took a different variegated. And I wasn't sure what was going to look, but I think it came out right. So, okay, so here's the bag. And it took me, then Monday and Tuesday I worked on this. So I spent three days on this thing. So here it goes. And, ta-da! So, <laughs> this is how it came out. Um, if I were doing it again... There are certain changes I make. First of all, I am one stitch too far over this way. So I didn't quite get it centered. Um, you can only tell like up at the top here. Um, if I had been one stitch over this way, it would have been perfect. Um, I, not something that's, not something to worry about, right? Um, so yeah. I don't know. I, I kind of like it. It grew on me. I wasn't sure that it was going to work changing the colors, um, but it kind of did. Now, if I had known I was going to do this, I think I would have wanted to use more of this like red purple variegation and pull it down into these point things because the way I stitched this is I actually just did it in a spiral and I like stitching these little ink circle things that way. Um, and I like the fact that when I'm using variegated floss, I don't get stripes that way. Um, but if I had known how I was going to end up doing it, I probably would have used this darker color and pulled it down here. And I thought about maybe stitching over those points with the darker red color, but I don't think so. So <clears throat> these are lined and basically I just, you know, undid the seam at the bottom of the lining to have access to the inside of the bag and then I'll whip stitch the bottom, which I haven't done yet because I wasn't sure if I want to go ahead and put something else on the back. And if I do put something else on the back, I don't know what. I was thinking I could do the same pattern in different colors, or I could use a different ink circles. And to that end, I actually um, went onto ink circles and I got some of their free, free charts. And I was thinking maybe this one, and then of course I can change the, the either change the date in the middle or I was thinking I'd just put like a K. Um, so I still have to decide on that. And if I decide to do that, obviously I don't want to go ahead and sew up the bottom, but this, so this is my start and finish, uh, my tote bag. I still have a blue one to, to do eventually. So who knows how maybe I'll sit there for another three years before I decide to do the third tote bag. But I know these were like a huge, like popular thing to get and stitch on three years ago. And you can't really find stuff like this. In fact, I was looking on eBay for a perforated tote bag and I found there's some Neiman Marcus ones that are like way too expensive for something like this. Um, and they're not lined. And so I wasn't gonna buy them, but cause these were like, what, $3, I think. They were in the dollar spot at Target. 
Um, and I think they had like some makeup bags at the same time and people were so excited about them. I mean, if you were watching Floss Tube, then you remember how excited people were about these things. But, um, yeah, anyway, so that was my start and finish for this week, which took up basically three days of stitching time. One, which was wasted and then, and I also, I have been having some, um, I get hand pain occasionally and then I wear a brace for a couple days and it's fine. Um, I've had it this week and I think that maybe working with the big beetle and having to, you know, cause obviously I have to um, do like a sewing method uh, sort of stitch on this cause you know, I have to go through, I, I can't pull it from the back very easily. Um, so I don't know, maybe that messed up my hand for the week. But I don't know. I'm I'm kind of pleased with it. Let me know what you guys think. I think it turned out kind of cool. Okay, so that is that tote bag. So it did take up three days, but that left four other days. So I have four other projects to show you. Um. I didn't actually feel like stitching every single day, but I did it. Um, okay. All right, next. Come on, be good. All right. Um, I worked on Sweet William this week. My real list kit. Okay, so I'm on a. I'm on a mission to get this done before the end of the year. And so my stitching this week was all right here. It's growing. It is so pretty. It really is. And um, I know I mentioned to you guys before that I have some new Yolis kits um, that I am gifting to myself for Hanukkah. And I'll be showing those with you during my Floss Nika videos. Um, so when I finish this one, then I have to figure out what I want to start. Because I'm going to start another one. Definitely. Um, okay, yesterday... I worked on Gigi, which is a Mirabilia Bewitching Pixie, and I am doing her on um, a fabric flare, uh, backgrounds fabric. So I have several of these pixies and several of the different, different and varied sort of backgrounds fabrics because I'm just kind of fascinated by putting these pixies on these backgrounds. <laughs> Um, so she's on the cottage one and I, oops, I did her, the rest of her arm and actually I filled in her hair and did her hat yesterday and started now she has a broom. She's holding a broom and there's a little butterfly on the fabric right there. And of course the broom is like right intersecting with it. So I thought I would try and like stitch around the butterfly and see how it looks. If it looks really stupid, I'll end up stitching over it. But if it looks like the butterfly's kind of landed on the broom, then I will leave it that way. So yeah, and then I also would think after what three years of doing this I would be a little bit less awkward um, I did this part too so I'm kind of bummed I'm going to lose these daisies in the pattern but these and the mushroom I think will still be intact and then what am I gonna do with it I don't know FFO wing is not my priority ever. 
so I don't know. <laughs> it might go in the under the bed box. I don't have an under the bed, but you know, in a bag or something. Okay. Um I worked on my Autumn Equinox Pixie this week. This is by Bella Filipina. It was funny, I was talking to, uh, I was texting with um, Backcountry Stitcher, I think that's her name, Jen, um, who I just met, just started watching, um, and she's she's great. I, I really enjoy her, her channel, and we were texting a little bit because we were talking about actually Hanukkah patterns, um, because she's also uh, a Jewish stitcher. Um, but we were also talking about Mirabilia's and Nora Corbett's and um, Bella Filipina's. <laughs> and I was saying, which is true, and, and until I was like, actually, I was, we were kind of uh, talking back and forth on a comment. Um, and I, I said to her, and it, it's kind of like it hit me because like when I was typing it out, I realized that this was true. But when I first started stitching, um, I remember even commenting on like the Mirabilia's and how the fancy ladies are gorgeous, but I don't know that I'd ever want to stitch one. And since that time, this is what's cracking me up. Since that time, I finished two Nor Corbett's. I did the Red Kitten and I did um, Eva, the other Bewitching Pixie. Those are finished. I finished the Mediterranean Mermaid, which I turned into Ariel. You guys who've watched me recently have seen that lots and lots. Um, so that's kind of like a not so small Mirabilia. Um, and then I have three Bella Filipinas that are in, or that are currently being worked at. Two Mirabilias, um, because I have the Frog Princess and um, Bianca Bella. I have a Nora Corbett, this one, um, the one I just showed you. And, um, and then I have, I have kitted up another Mirabilia and a Joan Elliott. I mean, it's like, I started out like I have no interest in doing these fancy ladies and now they're like a quarter of my projects. Taste change, right? Anyway, so that was, <laughs> that was kind of a long preamble to show you um, my work on my Autumn Equinox Pixie this week, which is one of the three Bella Filipinas that I have on the go. <clears throat> I'm really missing Bellatrix, and I didn't put her on my list to finish, so I haven't worked on her in a while, but I think she's going to get a bit of love in January because I'm kind of missing working on her. But I did work on my Pixie this week, and I basically worked on, I did this branch, I finished back stitching this hand, and then I started coming down with these, I don't know what these are, I don't know if they're like caterpillar, like cocoons, or they're ornaments or whatever, but they're really pretty. And there's, I think, three of them. Yeah, there's two little ones and a big one. So I started on those. And honestly, I think when I was saying I was going to try and get this done this year, that was a little bit overly ambitious because I just didn't realize how much more of this pattern there really is to go. I mean, it feels like I'm pretty far along because I've got her face and, you know, her torso and everything, but she has a really big skirt and then her legs and then there's the whole... The whole branch comes down and all this stuff down here and I still haven't finished her wings. So I just, I don't think that it's going to be possible to finish this, this, this year, but you know, you got to have a couple big asks, right? Okay. And that. But not least, have you ever noticed that in the U.S. we say last but not least? 
But then in like Australia, they always say lucky last. I find that interesting. This is Peace and Light by Satsuma Street. Which I definitely think I can get done before Hanukkah or Flasnika. So you'll be able to see those in see it in those videos. It may not be like FFO, but it will be sitting there. <laughs> okay, so peace and light. Oops. See, I'm just like not I'm not good about holding up these fabrics. I see some people and I think it's because they iron and maybe they use smaller they do smaller projects than I do but they'll hold up the, and it just it's all stiff looking and perfect and my fabric always wants to like flop around and not be not be uh, cooperative. But anyway I did a little bit more in this green part. I actually finished this whole section of the Star of David the circle around it and actually these blue wing pieces so I got quite a bit done on this this week <clears throat> so this is again peace and light by Setsuma Street and this is on a piece of fabric that I dyed myself um, it, it was if you will a reject piece I was trying to get a specific color for the um, <clears throat> uh, Enchantress of the Abyss, the Bella Fultina, and um, I was having a hard time. And um, most of you probably know, like Ada and Linen dye darker than um, even weaves <clears throat> because linen is 100% linen or flax, and um, Ada is usually 100% cotton, whereas even weaves are. Uh, a blend with um, <clears throat> some synthetic fibers in them um, and so they don't take the dye as well so because that's a Lugana when I dyed it it looked exactly how I wanted it to look when it was wet but then it dried lighter and I wanted the darker look so I tried a couple different things and finally I ended up having to go with an Ada to get the look that I wanted um, but that reject fabric was still really pretty. It just didn't look the way I wanted it to look for Enchantress of the Abyss. So I think it worked out really good for Peace and Light. Okay, so that is uh, all of my projects that I stitched on this week. Um, so I think I was pretty, pretty um, industrious. I mean, as I said, I feel like a little bit like I kind of wasted three days on the bag, but you know, it was kind of nice to have a start and finish at the same time. So, um, I have my little tablet -y thing here, which I am a hundred percent not, um, <clears throat> not, uh, like, I don't know what I'm doing with it. Right. I just, I got it just to, um, be able to put shadowing charts on. And, um, so, wait a minute. yeah, so I got it for shadowing charts and, um, but I got a piece of haul that I want to be able to show you guys. And so right before my video, I pulled it up on here so I could show you the, the picture. And of course it didn't stay on what I wanted. So now... I need to get back to it, and I'm not sure how, <laughs> because I have the patterns on here, but I want the cover page, and I had it, I had it before, so give me a second to try and see if I can get to this, um, Hold on. Okay, so haul, and this is, it's so funny because I got a text message from my friend Jolie from Stitching at the Cabin. Um, I think she and I have a little bit of a competition of trying to like um, enable each other. Um, and 
we usually are successful because we're both really weak. <laughs> but anyway, she sent me a picture of a chart. Um, and she's like, I saw this and I thought of you. She said she saw it in a, they were, she was in a, some kind of chat. And what was funny is then I had another friend uh, instant message me this morning with the same thing. Um, so it is uh, some charts from a Etsy shop called Oh My Stitches Shop. It's kind of like all one word, Oh My Stitches Shop. And um, I know I've like kind of complained on here about the lack of like cute, uh, Judaic themed patterns and you know everything is the same with the menorah and whatever um, but these are actually cute cat um, Hanukkah patterns so there was a single one and then this is a group of three so I got this group of three um, let's see if they have them okay. I think this might be my favorite So black cat with the dreidel, black cat with the menorah, and then black cat in the present, and then um, and then this is this is the one that she actually sent me. Is the black cat kind of in a cup? with the candle and stuff. So my favorite, I think, is the dreidel. So I think that would probably be the one that I would stitch first or, you know, I don't know if I'd stitch all of these, but I definitely will stitch the <clears throat> the dreidel one. Totally reminds me of Baggy. They all do, actually. But they're really cute. Um, something different. Something what I was asking for, right? Cute charts that are not, you know, the same as everything you see all the time. So yeah. Um, so she had some really cute things on this, this, uh, in this shop, a lot of cute Hanukkah, uh, not Hanukkah, a lot of cute Halloween stuff. Um, and a lot of cat, cat and Halloween and cat and Hanukkah. And let me see if I can pull up one of these. Well, I don't know, there's a graphic here, but you can kind of see all these different things. But anyway, that's what I got was those um, kind of two charts or four charts, however you want to put it, because it was like one was a set of three. Um, it was like $11 for a set of three patterns. That's not bad. And the other one was on sale for like $3.75. So, um, so thank you, Julie, for enabling me. I did purchase them, and I don't know when I will stitch that. I don't know that it'll be this year because I have peace and light to finish. But I don't know. Maybe I'll start it, like, on Hanukkah and uh, show you guys progress um, during my Flesnick videos or something like that. Um, that could be... Because I did that last year with, uh, with the peace and light. I started that. Um, okay, so that brings me to... What I want to talk about with my Hanukkah or Flasnica plans. So, you guys know, if you've been watching me, that I am going to be doing Flasnica videos this year. Uh, Hanukkah starts on the night of um, December 18th and ends on the 25th. Um, so, I will be doing a video every night and um, probably uploading each night. That's what I was able to do last time. And... Um, I will go over, I'll light the candles, uh, you know, with you guys, um, and <clears throat> so you can see the progressive, uh, beautifulness of, um, of the menorahs. I do have four menorahs this year to light, um, so I had two before, and one's just like a regular, you know, gold menorah, uh, one is... A menorah that I got from my ex-mother-in-law after she passed away. My sister-in-law gave it to me um, because my ex-mother-in-law collected them and um, I just asked for it and I was given one. Um, and then I got a cute cat menorah this year and I got this other little thing that's cute. And then um, I got some oil cups so you can, guys can see some of the different different ways to use the menorah. So anyway, I'll be doing the candles with you guys. 
I have a bit of Hanukkah info or trivia or however you want to say it um, to go over with you each night. Um, I will show you my pattern that um, I bought for myself, my Realist kit. And then the other thing is giving something to you guys. So I thought about this and I thought about this. You know, if you watch me that I, you know, I've been doing these little golden books, little golden book journals, I should say. And I had this great idea that I was going to make some to give away um, during the videos. And I kind of started that. I'm also kind of trying to do a, a series of kind of demoing how I do it. Um, and that just isn't happening that quickly for me. Um, but then somebody gave me a suggestion, which actually I had been thinking about. And the idea was is instead of actually having books to give away, what I should do is just pull names and then um, I can custom make a journal for you guys. So I think that that's what I'm going to do. Um, the question is, am I going to give one away every night or am I going to give away four or two or three? And I'm leaning towards going ahead and, and pulling a name every night. So here's a couple of caveats that you guys have to know. Um, so the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to give you something to say. Um, so I think, let's see, today's the 20th. So the 18th is in four weeks. So I guess we have four, four more Sunday videos. So there'll be four or five videos. Um, I'm going to go ahead and ask you if you're interested to, um, to say this code thing or whatever. Um, and you can say it today you can say it next week you can say it today and next week and i'll put your name in twice um that's fine i'm gonna go ahead and write out the names and put them in a bowl and do it that way um because the random comment picker won't pick from multiple videos and i want to just have entries in multiple videos so the caveats are going to be though that you guys have to understand um that there is going to be no deadline for me on getting these things done so in other words, what my plan is, is that I will pull a name each night, um, hopefully in your comment, you will give me some ideas of what book you would like or what story you would like and some colors that are your favorites. And then maybe we'll dialogue a little bit um, because I'm going to basically kind of custom do a book for you. Um, my books basically have... A prototype way I do it um, but obviously I pick the papers and I you know based on the book and based on the person and you know and all of the little ephemeras and things I put in you know obviously if somebody doesn't like flowers I'm not gonna put a bunch of flower stickers but if somebody loves flowers then I would you know that kind of thing um, so I'm not gonna give myself a deadline my deadline is gonna be you'll get it by next holiday season um, hopefully I'll get everything out faster than that, but you have to realize that these books do take quite a bit of time to put together. Um, and then the shipping of them isn't super cheap either. <laughs> um, it's going to cost me probably, you know, $15 for each of the books. So, you know, times that by eight, it's a, it's a little chunk. Um, which is why I say <laughs> that, uh, the super thinks is very helpful. Um, so, okay, so let me go over, this is my, my prototype book, so you can get some kind of idea, again, if you haven't seen what I do. So basically, I take a little golden book, and um, I uh, cut it up and remake it into a journal. I use the entire book, so you get all of the pages of the book, they're intact, they're not altered in any way. Uh, they're in the same order. They're just not all together. So um, I bind the book um, with a coordinating fabric and I sew <clears throat> buttons on the side. I just love the, how that looks. And then um, I just fill it with papers that I love that I think look good together and make me happy. Um, I have um, about four, so eight sides of just kind of a plain piece of paper, um, which is great for journaling, or if you're using this as some kind of like a cross stitch, you know, journal to 
put small pieces on. Um, as I said, the book pages are intact. And then there's all kinds of little pockets and things. Um, and then I have a couple of sort of fancy folded things in each book. Um, uh, I always put a bag in the middle, which makes pockets. And then I kind of fill it with all kinds of little tags and cards and ephemera. This is actually one of my easiest things to do, but everybody really loves this sort of, um, I don't know what you call it, maze or puzzle or whatever. It just kind of keeps going. Um, and it, again, it would be a great place to put little finishes or to journal. Um, I always put a coloring page in the book somewhere. Um, you know, and then you have just your plain, I mean, they're not plain, they're not white, they're kind of fancy papers, but, and again, pockets and, and all kinds of like cool little, little things and ribbons and laces and you know, whatever I feel like doing at the time, basically. Um, I make this kind of cool folded pocket that I fill with a bunch of stuff. There's a doily, usually. There's this thing in the middle. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so that's what they are. That's what I do. Um, and so what I would like you to say in this video, and then as I said, I'm going to give the same little spiel in all of the coming videos up through when my floss nook is going to start. Um, if you are interested in being entered in the drawing for one of these journals, put in your comment something about Golden Book Journal. Um, if you can possibly uh, do it, give me some ideas of stories. You know, if you have like a specific book that you loved. Now don't have everybody say Pokey Little Puppy. I don't have any more Pokey Little Puppies. Um, I have about a hundred books that I'm going to go through to pull the books for, for you guys and um, I'm not getting any more. So if I don't have exactly what you're asking for, I won't be able to do that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna buy specific books for people, but um, I don't have any, po any more Pokey Little Puppies, excuse me. Um, but if there is a book that you that you remember, please mention it. And if I have it, I can use it for you. Um, or if there's a story that you particularly like or whatever, um, again, let me know. Um, let me know if you if you love pink, if you hate pink, if you love florals, if you hate florals, um, that kind of thing. So I have an idea, and then you know I can of course I can um, connect with you to get an idea of what you would like when I make this <clears throat> custom journal. So I think I'm at this point, you know, I'm a glutton for punishment. So I think I'm going to pick eight people and make eight journals over the course of the year to send out to everybody. I will share them on here. So I'm not going to, you know, so if you are one of the recipients then you'll get to see its progress. Um, but yeah, that's my idea for, for Flosnica. So I hope you guys are excited about it. I mean, I think these journals are really cool. I've made them for a couple people so far, and everybody that I've given one to seems to really like them. Um, so I just wanted to show you some of the books I have. I mean, I, like I said, I have a big box of books. Um, and so I think I pretty much would have something for everybody. Um, so yeah, so let me just show you a few things. A few of the ones that I have, um, I have a Snow White. It has this horrible sticker on it, so that would have to come off in some way. Um, I don't know. I'll have to figure out a way to get that off. But I do have a Snow White. So I have older books, and um, I do have a couple Christmas ones, um, which if that's something that you would like, um, I'm working on actually a couple Christmas ones because that's what I started for these videos that I was going to do. Um, I have a 12 Days of Christmas Christmas Carol one. Um, I have a couple more religious ones. I'm not as interested in, in making books with those. Um, 
In fact, I'm probably not going to keep those. Eventually, I'll give them away. Um, I have a Lion King here. Um, let's see. There's a bunch of these. Um, these characters, Gina and Mercer Mayer. I'm not really familiar with these, but I do have some of these type things. Um, Hansel and Gretel. Uh, the Little Red Caboose, actually. I think this one is for Jolie. Although, I don't know. I can't remember if this is the one that she wanted or that she wanted. Um, that little engine that could. I think that's the one she wanted. Um, there's a couple of Winnie the Poohs. Bambi. 101 Dalmatians. Richard Scary. Um, let's see. Baby farm animals. That one's kind of cute. Pound puppies. Trucks. Um, this is a more modern Marvel uh, Iron Man. Um, I have made a couple of more modern ones. I've made a couple Star Wars ones. Um, if you watch um, Michelle Bendy Stitchy back in July, I sent her and Rose uh, some books and she showed the Star Wars one that I made for her. And then I made a dinosaur one for Rose as well, but I just wouldn't give it up enough for the video. Um, there's another Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh and the Dragon, uh, Moana. Let's see. Oh, here's one of the Star Wars. Star Wars, I am a droid. Uh, Muppet Babies. Let's see. Muppet Treasure Island. Sesame Street. Oh, Shrek. Aladdin. I have actually a bunch of Aladdin. Uh, Aladdin and then Aladdin and the Magic Carpet Ride. Um, oh, here's a one I really like, Lady and the Champ, and another Bambi. Is this the same Bambi? I don't know if this is the same Bambi that I just showed, but here's another Bambi. Um, Jake and the Neverland Pirates, Paw Patrol. Those are less classic in my mind. Peter Cottontail, Christmas Carols, Frosty the Snowman. I must be in the, oh, Alice in Wonderland. I bet a lot of people would like Alice. And I think I have a couple Alices. Um, and I don't mind doing, you know, if I have the book and more than one person wants an Alice who wins, then I would do that. Um, Mother Goose, Mickey, Mickey Mouse, Mother Goose. Um, Good Night Little Dragons. So, you know, again, I have a lot of variety of these books here. Um, why do they never want to? Doc McStuffins, which I wouldn't even know this what this was until I my nephew started watching this when I was over there. I'm a bulldozer. I have too many like Christmas ones that I am not all that interested in. <clears throat> in fact, I might also just give away some of those. Uh, Cat in the Hat. Uh, Casper. I'm trying to see if I have, you know, classic. Woody Woodpecker, Dora the Explorer, um, uh, Saggy Baggy Elephant, Let's see. Oh, here's another Aladdin and the Magic Carpet Ride. Uh, dinosaur Train. If you love dinos, I could... Uh, this is one of my favorites. Tangled. I might want to make myself tangled. Monsters, Inc. Oh, and I lied. Guess what? I have one pokey little puppy. And a shy little kitten. So... I would be able to make one pokey little puppy book. Uh, little Mermaid. 
Mother Goose, uh, Trolls. So anyway, you guys get the idea. Um, Lion King, Frozen, Happy Frozen. Uh, I have a Barbie, Pinocchio, Peanuts. Here's another Lady in the Tramp. Um, Detective Mickey Mouse. Tom and Jerry. Okay, so you guys get the idea of what I have. Um, so, if you would like to be entered in this drawing for me to make you a cross stitch, not cross stitch, a little golden book, altered book journal, which will be just like this, but completely different. Um, <laughs> Then in your comment, please say golden book journal or golden book or, you know, let me know that you want to be entered in the drawing. Don't say the giveaway and the free and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you guys know the reason that we all say don't say that is because there are bots and trolls who just go onto videos to try and get free stuff. And I certainly am not going to spend hours and hours and hours making a uh, journal for somebody who's just trying to get free stuff. Um, too much, too much time, effort, and heart and soul goes into making those things. Um, but let me know that you are interested in being entered in the drawing for Flosnica. Um, and then if you could give me an idea of, you know, what what you are, um, what book you, you might want or what story you love or a couple stories that are options. Um, and then when I pick the winners, then I can dialogue with you guys over Instagram or something like that. And, um, we can work on, I can work on putting a book together for you. And as I said, I'm not, I'm not going to completely pressure myself to get these things done right away. Um, I'm going to try and maybe get one done a month. Um, with some extra months in there for uh, life happening. So I will endeavor to get all of these eight books done by next holiday season. Um, I could surprise everyone and get them all done in, you know, by February. I don't think that that's likely, but it could happen. You know, it's not against the entire realm of possibility. Um, however, the more likely scenario is that I will do, you know, kind of, I do them in steps. So I'd probably get a bunch of the spines done and a bunch of the papers pulled and a bunch of, and then towards the end of the summer, maybe then all of them will start coming together at once. Um, so that's my idea of what to do for, um, my kind of big Flossnicka giveaway, um, so, you know, let me know if you're interested. Hopefully, hopefully I'll actually will get a lot of response. <laughs> um, you know, it's going to kind of feel terrible if like two people are like, oh, I'd like one. Um, you know, if you do look on Etsy for this type of thing, they are in some cases ridiculously expensive. Um, so, you know, it is, I think, a, a value something that's worth something for lack of a better way of saying it. Um, so yeah, so go ahead and, and just make sure that in your comment, if you're interested to, um, say something about the golden book journal and then I will, uh, take your name. I'm going to put them all in a big bowl. a la Laura from stitching at the shore. And then I will, I will draw a name each night of Hanukkah or yeah, well each night of Hanukkah on my Flasnica video. So, um, I think that's it. I think that's, I think I gave you all the information. Um, and as I said, if you want to comment on each video from now until, um, the drawings, um, then I don't have a problem putting your name 
in the bowl more than once. Um, I'm not going to make more than one book for a single person, but um, you know, you can increase your increase your odds that way, right? Um, so, um, yeah, I think that that's it. Um, I hope you guys have, if you are in the United States celebrating, I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving in whatever form it takes. If you're with, you know, 50 people and if you're, or you're with your one person or if you are by yourself with, you know, a turkey TV dinner, watching something great on TV. Um, you know, however it looks for you, I hope that it is a day that you enjoy. And until I see you again, um, before I say that, before I say my tag, I was going to say, I, when I do see you again next week, um, please remember that we will be having a Zoom that afternoon after my video goes up on one, on uh, Sunday. <clears throat> um, yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Until I see you again, please remember to be content, be kind, and be crafty. This is Carla. Bye-bye.